Let's call in the members. Ruby Sahoud is a Liberal MP from Brampton. Shannon Stubbs is a Conservative MP from North Central Alberta. <laughs> Tracy Ramsey, we can't get enough Tracy Ramsey. She's back for a second in That's a row right. as an NDP MP from Southwestern Ontario. Welcome to you all. Thank you, um, Thank you. This trade war. I'm trying to figure out if we should engage in this trade war even more than we have. Should we just turn the other cheek because we can't win it anyway? Or do we just give up? install negotiations till we get our next president. Shannon? Well, I think the Liberals are going to have to make these decisions and explain to Canadians exactly why we are in this position in the first place. These tariffs have been looming for a year. Um, I think Tracy said in QP today, there isn't anybody who didn't see them coming. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy is, you know, in March, the Prime Minister did a victory lap in Quebec and Ontario and and uh, Saskatchewan personally assured the workers and the families there that he would protect them. And here we see, yet again, another huge failure and botched job on a major file, causing more uncertainty, economic turmoil, and deterring investment from the Canadian economy. Yeah, Southwestern Ontario could yeah. hit very hard on this one, Stuart Tracy. What do yeah. you make of this? It's, it's what should we be doing? It's devastating. Well, the Liberals have failed in getting us an exemption. And they've had over a year to do this. Everyone could see this writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. When they came out two months ago and, and gave us you know, a month-long uh, extension, another month-long extension, uh, this is the time when we should have been been pushing extremely hard for an exemption. It obviously wasn't working at the minister-to-minister -minister level. We needed this to be escalated up the chain. This is very critical to jobs, not just in steel and aluminum, but think about all the products that are created with steel and aluminum across our country. Auto, you know, there, our manufacturing base is, is very negatively impacted by this. And this is a failure of the government. And it's not the first time on the trade file that we've seen this. Um, you know, softwood lumber is still out there as an issue for us. Uh, super calendar paper. We've certainly had a lot of things come at us from the U.S. that have not been resolved by this Liberal government. And I will say that we do understand the move today was necessary uh, to respond in kind, I think was the right and appropriate move at this point in time. But let's not pat ourselves on the back and think that we're done the work here. We, the hard work starts today to make sure we get that permanent exemption. Ruby, what could have been done differently? I mean, where where could the Trudeau government, because this, this is something that they're laying on the failure of NAFTA to come together, at least that's what Wilbur Ross said. Um, did we fail on NAFTA, or should we point the finger of blame solely at Donald Trump? We're not failing on NAFTA. We're working very hard for Canadians, and it's really rich to hear from the NDP that all of a sudden they believe in free trade. Um, I've never Ruby, heard that. We want an I've exemption. never heard that it's before. Not free trade. Um, we want an I've never heard it before, We've and I think fair. the okay, response let her finish. the response today was not something that just occurred today. We were well prepared, knowing that this was coming on May 31st, and and there have been talks at the higher level, and you know, including the Prime Minister. This is. Is, the reason this is happening is because Donald, Donald Trump is trying to leverage a situation. I think we've acted appropriately and we've given a very strong response and it was a very dumb decision on their part. Except there really was no plan, right? And this there was no the preparation plan. in the budget to protect this, this or any morning, contingency you plan to protect, to protect you workers exactly or to protect, to protect the happen. sector. Well, and, there, and, but, but, and you know what? We, no, we buy half of the U.S.'s steel, steel and aluminum. Right. Yeah. So this isn't a one-way street. Um, they are also going to be affected, and I hope that they're going I, to. I, I just, but I'm then also how bizarre that the Prime Minister would go to the United <laughs> States and make a speech there that was widely viewed as being attacks on uh, on the U.S. president, knowing how he responds to those sorts of things. So what do you right just roll over? Yeah, we are in the situation that we're in, I, and we're in it together, mm -hmm. and this is not helpful, really, because this is a Canadian response to the situation. Right. And we have just agreed in the House that we, we feel similar on this issue, and that Canada needs to act uh, appropriately, and we're taking those measures, so I just and said we that are going to we, see an We understand the, the, mo the moves taken today were appropriate. What's not appropriate is not having that exemption, and not understanding that the exemption is key to the success of our sectors and to people's jobs. The 232 decision is about national security. We as Canadians bogus, are we are right? written, totally yeah, we bogus. are written into their law as part of their defense and industrial base. Right. We are the only country to have that designation right. until last year when the e or when uh, the UK and Australia entered in. This is a very small group of security partners. There is no case here. And so that and needs to be made. I'm sorry, let WTO. me finish Ruby, please. We're fighting them on Ruby, the NAFTA. Hang on, let on the 232. This needs to be a decision that's taken to U.S. courts. A decision needs to be made that Canada is written into U.S. law and therefore has a natural exemption well, I don't to know this. If you can get Donald Trump to agree. Realistically, though, Shannon, what 
could uh, Prime Minister Scheer have done differently? I mean, the Liberals worked the congressional contacts. They worked uh, certainly at governors and state levels, uh, trying to get these guys conditioned to it. But you're dealing with a mercurial, whimsical president. How do you how do you prepare for that? Well, uh, I would say par part of uh, knowing that President Trump can be unpredictable in the way that he does uh, respond. Uh, you know, that does call into the question, into question why the Prime Minister was in the United States making that speech during these negotiations. And so that's why it seems to me that there's evidence that there was no plan. There was, it, there could have been or worked the into the budget a contingency a plan, plan, a, I mean, a plan to protect, uh, protect workers, protect the sector, protect families. But this is about the Prime Minister and the fact yeah. that he took a victory lap saying there was a deal when there wasn't. Well, and sounds like he was pretty close to one, but I anyway. don't hear plans coming out from either side across the aisle. You're the government. You're the government. We, we are the government and we are responding appropriately and we are going to be taking them to court under NAFTA and, and to the WTO. So this is an appropriate measured response and I know that they right. will they will they yeah. will act and change their mind after this. The other this problem one month, we have one month now. The tariffs start tomorrow on us. We have one month until July 1st when those uh, reciprocal tariffs come on. In that month, workers are going to be in a very precarious position in our country. So there should have yeah. been another announcement today on how those workers are going to be uh, made assured that their jobs over the next 30 days are going to be protected by this government. All right, Shannon. We didn't hear that the at all. The other problem too is that this government is hiking taxes, hiking red tape, driving investment out of Canada and all of that combined is destroying our competitiveness vis-a-vis -vis the United States wow, which which we haven't us hiked <laughs> taxes it's so misleading it, when you say that we've lowered them on uh, small businesses and as low and as the US the US has gone below us and well, that's causing some problems well of course anyway, yeah. I do want to get something because Shannon has been fiery uh, it might be the understated word in the house on the mm -hmm. pipeline question now we've uh, we've kind of debated Trans Mountain quite a bit, but mm -hmm. I, I, there seems to be a push coming back to get the energy east, which was mothballed by Trans Canada, uh, for a bunch of reasons, government or logistical or legislative or regulating. Um, is this possible to come back? Do we even need to consider energy east if we're going to get the Trans Mountain pipeline expanded? We do, because uh, market access and increasing export markets is absolutely critical for the long-term viability of the Canadian energy sector. Mm -hmm. And the Energy East pipeline would have allowed for Canadian en energy independence, be able to reduce reliance on foreign oil, and be able to uh, also ship to Europe. The, the, the issue is that Energy East was abandoned, though, precisely because of uncertainty and uh, last-minute rule changes and applying a double standard to that pipeline that wasn't applied to any of the other pipelines that the Liberals assessed or approved. So, uh, the you know, the mayor of St. John has come out yeah. very forcefully articulating the losses to, to New Brunswick and, uh, and to the whole country. And, you know, op-eds are running in that province today saying, that, you know, that this nation building opportunity of the Energy East pipeline was doomed by the rule changes and the regulatory uncertainty from the Liberals. And they're asking why the Liberals are picking winners and losers in pipelines and in provinces. I'll get to you in a second. You, your argument is probably going to be one pipeline is one pipeline too many. Well, I mean, I'm sure we're going to hear, you know, the, the arguments for the pipelines, but I understand drawing a line because essentially we've now taken public ownership of a failed private project in our country. So, you know, to say now what other failed private projects have there been, uh, you know, it's not, I don't think it's surprising to see conservatives, uh, you know, looking to put forward this argument to be uh, now maybe taking other projects into the public sphere. We don't agree no, with that. And I'm saying that, uh, you know, this is still a very divisive issue across our country. Whether you're talking about Energy East, whether you're talking about Kinder Morgan, uh, these projects are very divisive. And I don't understand how yesterday we stood in the House of Commons and voted for Romeo Saganash's uh, respect of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Now, the Conservatives did not vote in favour of that. I know that. Um, but the government did. And today, Don Davies stood up from our party and listed off First Nations in BC that are opposed to the Kinder Morgan pipeline. Right. We received no response on this disrespect to Indigenous people. There does seem to be... Uh a lower priority having to put on energy. So I didn't hear the prime minister saying we're going to build it or put his shoulder to the wheel to get that thing moving forward. Why not? In some ways, that's there's, a less intrusive pipeline there's, because there's a big it's going difference. from Montreal to St. John. There's a big difference mm -hmm. between the two pipelines. I mean, with Energy East, there was no political interference in that. And it, yes, uh, TMX, was. Was. T that's, that's utterly no, untrue. TMX, no, 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 okay, that's utterly TMX, untrue. 
No, in February 2016, you closed the application. Months later, struck it up, then disbanded the panel. Then rules were changed, and at the last minute, Both? the Liberals directed that panel to apply upstream and downstream emission standards Both to the consideration of NGs, okay, which didn't apply okay. to any other pipelines, don't apply to foreign oil, and frankly, don't apply to any other major infrastructure Both? in any other sector. Both pipelines have gone through rigorous regulations and rules that they had to get to get through to be approved. Mm -hmm. So TMX That's has been approved. Your change forced to abandon okay, okay, the No one can hear if everyone's talking. And there is no province that interfered with the building of Energy East. It was a bad business. It was a business decision made by the company to uh, not go forward with it. And TMX, that's not the case. We've got political interference okay. out in you're, BC. You're and there, interference, and there you don't know a, what the court's going to rule on, whether or not they have okay. the ability there to stand up. There is also a divide between Indigenous people. There are many communities that have come out in support that's for right. TMX. The point is they and need so to set the rules of the game, make them right. clear, apply them equally, and provide certainty for investment in Canada okay. and in energy, period. Fascinating debate. Unfortunately, the time is up. So thank you all. I'm sure Thanks. we'll be talking about this again and more. All right. Thanks again. We'll see you.